Hi everyone, I hope you're good guys and welcome to a new video. So today we're gonna talk about drum rack and I'm gonna share with you my drum rack that I use for my hat that really makes my life easier and allow me to instantly add some delay reverbs, being able to play with the GK, the pitch, all of this kind of stuff that with just one rack that you can automate and control directly inside Ableton and add a lot of variation to your hats in your track. So let's jump into Ableton. So this is my previous Ableton drum rack and you can see you have the kick, you have different kind of hats, shaker, clap snare. And the problem with that is firstly, the kick I usually like to treat it separately. I always ended up taking out of the rack because if I wanna walk around with some term or with a bass line, or maybe the hats, I want to have some delay or reverb at one point in the track, for example, during the breakdown to get this washout effect. And I cannot do it, or it's more complicated if I have the kick or other elements. So that's why I kind of decided, as you can see in my template, to uh, separate everything. I have my kick, my tongue, and I have my hat, which is this rack I've created here. So I'm gonna explain you in a second. So the cool thing with this rack is was like everything was in one rack. So it was very great if you just wanna use, for example, push and you don't wanna uh, change track, it's more effective, but there is no perfect solution. You just have to find the one the best for you. I have as well this drum selector that I usually put in my sample pack as well, where you can, this is really handy when you just wanna use the push and don't, don't wanna use anything else. You just take your kick, you can select quickly a kick, select a hat to pitch it, add some delay, add reverb. So that's pretty handy with if you just use the push, but to be honest, most of the time, I don't like to walk this way and I rather to have individual track. I don't like when stuff are too, um, too much set. Like I want to be able to have some flexibility. So that's why I create this hats rack. So we're gonna recreate it from scratch. And then after I will show you how you can use it. And for example, you have, this is like run process and you can get something. So it's hard to in the track. It's much better like this. So yeah, obviously what you need is a drum rack and you wanna add a simpler obviously because you wanna be able to load your samples. But there is a few things I wanna add as well. Uh, for example, an EQ because I will often need an EQ. Uh, I will add this utility which is just there as well here. And I will add as well a saturator. So sometimes I use saturator, sometimes I use overdrive, but as I use more often saturator than overdrive, I decide to put saturator. If I wanna use overdrive, I can just grab it anyway, but uh, I will deactivate to just save a bit of CPU, leave this like this, it's fine. And one thing you wanna do, like I can rename it, for example, close I hat, and I'm gonna duplicate, so I'm just holding control, clicking, and I can press like this and it duplicate the exact same chain. And I'm just gonna rename it because I had two. I've kind of doubled each element. It's just because sometimes I like, for example, the open hats, I like to have one in the center. And at one point in the track, I like to have a second one, which is way much more spacious, which is kind of fill up the, the stereo image and like give it a more driving effect to your hat. And I've done the same with shaker, if you wanna use kind of a shaker sound. So this obviously is really up to you to what you wanna put and how you wanna rename it. Yeah, the idea is the same. And then the last one is the right. All right, so now you ha this is a good start, but now each element sometimes I found myself that I use some effect, some audio effect more in certain sound than other. So for example, the open hat, I said that I wanted sometimes to have the sync on the stereo. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to delay and I have this stereo with uh, preset, which is basically a hat effect. And it's just a delay in time mode where you usually put around maybe here and it's making you sound stereo. So I'm just gonna quickly load up all of the track with samples. So you just go pick up the ones you want. So one thing you have to be careful, don't drag it here because you have to go in the sampler and put in the sampler because we're gonna do some mapping later. And if you just drop it here in this space here and not inside the sampler itself, it will kind of reset the sampler and you will lose all of you mapping to the macro and then automation and so on. So I'm just gonna load it up right now. All right, so now I have close I hat, second close I hat, one open hat, second open hat. So you see here it's on the stereo because of this. That's exactly what I wanted. And then you have shaker, you first right, second right. So you can see here it's, it's kind of doesn't play the way I want. So first thing you need to do, remove for all of them, I should have done it at the beginning, but 
click on retrig, remove the sustain, bring the release at the maximum amount. But like this, it plays the sample the whole way. Rather than here, you see it stop as far as I. So that's what I want. So I'm just gonna do that for all of them. So one thing I, I just explained is retrig, I just activate because if you let it activate it, it will retrig all the time you close I had. So it doesn't let it play the sample the whole way along if you press again before the end. Rather than in, if you deactivate retrig, even if you play a 16 close I had, it will play the whole sample all the time for all of the close I had. Rather than if retrig is activated, it will stop the sample and reach it from the beginning every time it's the new trigger. Okay, once you got that, we can start maybe to map a little bit. So some of the mapping was the decay because this is something really nice to uh, being able to control and it's allowed to add movement, add variation. So I'm just gonna map this right now. And so basically the maximum is 60 seconds. Usually you don't need that much. Three seconds is the best, so I'm just gonna do that here and it's more precise to uh, set your GK. So you see here it's pretty close, but and it's especially effective with close I had as well if I put in repeat the push. And you can easily automate that. So I'm just gonna rename quickly. And second things I decided to map is the right uh, pitch. So you can go to control here. And you can use transpose, but it's a bit too brutal. So I like I use the detune. So this I'm gonna map to macro five for the first ride and to macro six for the second ride. If you wonder why I have two rides, I just like to use two rides sometimes. So I put it in case. Obviously, you can replace it with whatever you like. Usually, I have to one more like metallic ride, and I have to I like to have a second one, maybe more noisy or a bit granular. Let's say right tune. Right to tune and so oh you see this one I didn't map the good one sorry you see it was too brutal So that's some variation you can add. It's not it's not to pitch to tune your drums. It's just like to add variation. You can use a frequency shifter if you find this one not enough. But usually this range is fine. And so now before to talk about the return and the effect. Yeah, let me just finish. I actually didn't finish because each track has different kind of particular effects. So here was the stereo, but one thing I've done as well, uh, I had a sidechain compression. So. I put usually right here at four, short attack, release I live like this, and then after this one here and the sidechain, I want I have my sidechain track here. So this way, oh, I don't have MIDI, but let me actually grab the MIDI pattern here, the original. Okay, and for example, I have it just makes space for the kick. And this pattern, this stereo and compressor, I'm going to copy Control C and I'm going to do it as well for the shaker because usually I like my shaker to be on stereo exactly. So I will add them as well and I will as well add it to the two right. So now the two right, usually I have one in the center and uh, one on the side. That's how I like. But sometimes I put them both on the side on the stereo. But yeah, this way. You see, maybe this one I will leave it in the middle. And I want this actually to be after the EQ. This one stereo. Shaker stereo. I don't have the second shaker, but you can do the same. All right, in terms of process and the chain itself, that's it. It's pretty straightforward, but I put the, the tool that I use the most. I usually always use saturator sure, EQ. So I put them here because like this, I have them and I don't have to log them all the time. So now it's time to talk about return and that's where we're gonna add some delay and reverb. I've seen the things like this as a return. I want it to reverb one short 
and one more large so let's say the short it can be nice for clover hat open hat and maybe the white one is nicer for the right or even if i want to do some washout effect or sometimes the second open hat as well because it's very on the stereo or even the shaker i like to send them in the longer river because i don't know it's just works better it gives more dimension to your hat basically so you just right click create return and i'm just gonna rename reverb clause and create another one reverb long so then here feel free to put whatever you like i put my the my default preset which is this one and what i've done is i've assigned the dk to macro 7 and i have the long one it's exactly the same preset but i have a longer dk let's say around five seconds that i will map to macro 8 and so here i have reverb close verb long so once you have assigned your macro you need to put the dry weight at 100 percent actually and what i've done is i add a bit of saturation for the close one i put it after and i've done a little bit of eq as well to just kind of get rid of the low frequency so you can go yeah around there 200 you can maybe be a bit more drastic and for this one put it before there is no especially reason to be fair again an eq and here what i've done is i've also add a stereo effect so this is not especially necessary that's up to you but because usually i send the right and shaker which are stereo anyway so it's like everything it's stay on the stereo and so now you have you first So sometimes for the clothes I had, I like a short, sharp reverb. Sometimes I like a longer reverb. So that's why I like to have both reverb, depend on what I feel to do. But yeah, you can put like this. And then after you can start. Mix a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna. And you can, you see, you can start to mix as well. And so I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna add the delay before, but you can after easily control all of your level you sent and you have everything under control here. And that's easy to kind of mix all of drum dress right here. All right, so now let's add some delay. So I use four different delay. To be fair, it's the four delay that I use in my shuffle hats rack already. So it's like four delay I've designed, especially for hats. It works well, it creates this kind of shuffling effect. It adds movement to your track basically. So the first one is pretty much like my default. Uh, let me actually solo this like this. We can have a listen. Just put dry weight 100%, feedback maybe around 30%. I leave in the time sync in three, but just work well like this. And yeah, the first filter is pretty much the same. And you can see, it's get this ping pong effect. All right, second return now. Again, we grab another delay. So here pretty much the same setting, but you put in two, so feedback at 30%. Let me actually play. And you can see you can hear it coming in the left here. This usually works well with the right and next one. Okay, create return delay three. Actually, I'm going to rename the other. All right. So for this one, let me actually play first. So we don't need the ping pong. We don't need the filter. And we need to have this unsynchronized. So then after, obviously, you can experiment with different delay. You can obviously put your own delay. That's really up to you. But that's the one I use because it's the one I use the most often. And yeah, so sorry, I put in three and five and you get the ticketed, ticketed effect. All right, and then finally, the last delay for so let me just send it here. 
So get rid of the ping pong, get rid of the filter, 100% dry wet, and you want something like this. So this way now, you have different uh, flavor for your hat. One thing important that I will recommend to do is because to send this delay in the reverb. So what you can do here, you can basically right click and enable send, send it to the reverb. So I'm gonna send to the first reverb to the closed one because the wide one is gonna be too wide and it's gonna kind of mess up your mix. So just, yeah, minus 17 was working well. So I'm gonna do the same for the other. All right, so this one, when I send my hats to a return delay as well, it's got some delay, but it's got some reverb as well. So it's it's kind of mixing well together. And yeah, basically now you can start to mix the way you want. So you know you two first send is like close reverb, long reverb, and then delay one, two, three, four. Then after it's, you just need to hear, use your ear to see what it does to your hats and. Maybe this one like this and maybe hat like this. Like this. So let's see with the let's see with the hole actually. So usually when the rider they play this pattern here, like a lot of knots, you can see here, I don't put uh, too much delay because it kind of get messy. Even here I don't put delay on the right because it's already super messy. So you probably won't. But you can see if it's in solo. This one is nice. All right, so you probably need to uh, kind of mix the volume a little bit here. But yeah, that's the great thing. You, here you have everything you can uh, mix with because you have all of your sand, you have your volume, your pan. And then what I do sometimes uh, is I add a drum bus on top of that because it's great if you want to kind of glue a bit everything. And if you wanna, I like to use it. So let me, I like to use it to So trim control the input to reduce the transient of the reverb a little bit. Doesn't really need, I doesn't really much use drive and crush, but you can if you want. And it's just get everything more in control. So yeah. So now you got your trams here the as the opposite of how it was dry now. And yeah, that's uh, a rack that I am using a lot now because I have everything. And if you have the Perch Heaven, you can sequence directly. Honestly, it's, it's quite a bit sophisticated or hard, let's say, to kind of use the sand with the push. But I hope guys you like this rack. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can grab the rack for free. The link is in the description. I will put as well the MIDI file of the drum, of the drums here. If you wonder about the other sample I use, this is the kick I use. It's from my big time techno samples. All of the hats as well were from uh, this sample pack, which is my big time techno sample pack. And all the thing I use is this preset. This was like this acid line from my new waste table techno bank so you can have fun with 
All right, guys. Thank you for watching. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye. Take care.